Hi there, it's Kelly Harrison Tate um, here. I am going to speak on behalf of Carol Potts. So, Carol Potts is our stud office manager. Um, she has been at Willisley for over 15 years and has a keen interest in stud. She has an amazing knowledge on stallions, availability, and also their paperwork. Uh, she imports chilled and frozen semen from Europe for us and acts as an agent for some studs including VDL and Shocker Molar. Um, so is a very useful and efficient member of the team. Um, she's currently off at the moment so on, on with her um, approval um, I am going to just run through her talk which she was going to present on export papers, breathing contracts, ensuring your semen and covering certificates. Basically, all the nitty-gritty paperwork that is involved with breeding. Being prepared for breeding your mare is important. And if you can have these things lined up as much as possible before we even need it, it makes it much smoother um, for breeding your mare and also for caring for your foal and your mare afterwards. Right, so where to start with breeding paperwork? Well, export papers are a good place to start. Now this is what we need to receive with semen that is either chilled or frozen that's been imported from outside of this country, so outside of the UK, and it should accompany the semen. When accompanying the semen, it should be in their original form, so it should be in coloured, um, should be in colour, with the stamp in colour, the signature in colour, the signature performed by an official veterinarian and it correctly filled out. Often it is in two languages. It is often in English and also the language of the nation that it is going to be received from. It's so important that we receive these papers as it is an indication that the semen has been approved as being disease free. The stallion has had his health tests that meet our requirements in the UK. And it is actually a legal requirement from the government. So if these papers are not received, then us as vets are not allowed to inseminate the semen. There's a small exception now where an emailed copy can be accepted on the day of arrival as long as the original copy arrives within 24 hours of the semen arriving. So if we receive an emailed copy of the export papers, we often telephone the stud who is sending it and ensure that an original copy is on its way as well before we inseminate the mare. Not inseminating the mare isn't just to follow the paperwork trail but it is also to protect your mare from getting an infectious disease such as equine viral arteritis or EVA or contagious equine metritis such as CEM. These can be both passed venereally um, and it's something that especially if you're trying to breed your mare you do not want them to have. So it is very important for lots of reasons. Um, we always check it thoroughly as well because sometimes the date and the batch are wrong um, and it's important that everything matches. The other thing just to say is that if you are having, if you have received frozen semen, then it doesn't have to be with the original paperwork. The original paperwork stays with the complete batch of semen that was frozen, which might be in storage and you might be just getting one dose. If this is the case, a photocopy is acceptable. So export papers, the traceability of the movement of the transported equine semen, it says what, what countries they've been through, and when it left and when it should have arrived. And, and as I said, it's proof of the stallion's health status as well. The certificate must show the word original across the middle of each page. You can see here, just in the faded background, there's the word original. It should have the stallion name and life number on it, the semen collection date, and the dates of the current stallion health tests. It must also have the Ministry Vet stamp and signature. So you can see here, here's a coloured stamp. If we just go back a page here, you can see which is how it was. Just it's fan stamp folded over there, and then it's fan stamped here. So it should have these these marks on them to be. So we know that they are original copies, um, not duplicates, and that they have not been tampered with. What happens is something not right. It's not right. So these boxes here, these polystyrene boxes, are what we commonly receive chilled semen in. Um, they are kept with ice packs and it keeps the semen cool, so um, about 5 degrees temperature. This 
increases its longevity as it reduces its metabolism by keeping it cool um, and means that it should be in good condition and of good quality on receival. The papers are often stuck in a pouch on top or sometimes they're, they're tucked inside and the box should be sealed as well. So this tape here, as you can see, it's been opened and put back on, but this tape should be, should be sealed and it shouldn't have been tampered with in any way. So if the semen arrives with no paperwork, as said, we need to contact the sub that sent it and, and check what's gone wrong. And if the paperwork isn't correct, it's the same difference. Um, sometimes we may receive an unsigned or unstamped photocopy certificate. And as I said, it's a bit, bit like if you receive it by email, but it, it must be posted to us within 24 to 48 hours. It's, it's very important that this happens, otherwise as we can't do it. But generally we communicate with the stud or the agent and, and you know, there is a solution on the horizon. What can we do? So firstly call the stud or agent to see if the correct paperwork can be sent. The other thing is we can check if frozen semen is available in the UK. So if it has already been legally imported and there's frozen semen in the UK and the chilled semen isn't viable for insemination, then frozen semen may be able to be used. This depends on how the mare is lined up. Some mares, it very, would be very difficult to do that because they might be scheduled to ovulate at 3 a.m. in the morning, um, which makes it very intensive to use frozen semen on. Some mares as well are not the candidates for frozen semen, so we would advise not inseminating on frozen semen and not trying to locate it. Um, if this happens, then we do have to let the mare ovulate because often we'd have given the ovulation agent the day before, so she would be due to ovulate before the next day. Um, and then we have to bring her around into season again. Sometimes your mare might be able to wait for the following day for insemination, so another semen order can be made. Obviously when we're ordering semen, we are trying to inseminate them on the day they are due to ovulate, so that can be sometimes quite risky, um, and it might mean a second collection and postage fee for no reason because your mare might have ovulated before you receive it but it can be an option. Basically it's important to talk the options through with the vet and see what can be done for your mare and your circumstances. So breeding contracts, this is something important to consider when you choose your stallion. Um, you should always check the breeding contract, it could completely affect the budget. So stud fee is often the fee you pay if your mare is in foal. Some studs, however, or some stallions will ask for you to pay per dose, so especially if it's frozen semen, you might pay per dose. That means you pay that one dose of semen. If your mare does not get in foal, you still have to pay for it, and if you want to get more semen, you'll have to pay the same fee again. So it's important to check, because it, especially if you're thinking of your financial budget um, when breeding your foal. Terms and conditions of the payment of the stud fee as well. Does it have to be upfront? Does it have to be when your mare's in foal at heartbeat scan? There's a lot of differences in, in this, and it is up to you as the mare owner and the person purchasing the stud fee to research what the terms and conditions are before we start. It's also important to see what happens if your mare does not get in foal. Do you still have to pay it, or are there other choices? So... <laughs> If your mare does not get in foal, do you get a refund? There are some stallions out there who offer a no foal, no fee option. This is fantastic, very, very fair of the stallion owners. Um, and basically, they will ship the semen to you um, and you just pay the one stud fee, but only if she gets in foal. The hidden costs you do just have to bear in mind is that there might not be the stud fee to pay for if she doesn't get in foal, but in all cases that I can recall, you will still have to pay the collection fee if it's fresh or chilled semen and the shipping. So that will mount up if you're, if you're trialling for several cycles. So there will still be a cost even if there's no actual stud fee to pay. Are you allowed to carry over the nomination to the following season? So if she doesn't get in full this year, so 2020, could you actually go, okay, she's not going to take this year. There's some reasons why it, she might not be taking. So let's try next year where she'd be more set up to, to have a go. She might fold late in the season. You just want to have one go in, in July. And then if she doesn't take, you want to 
postpone it to the following year because it's getting a bit late in the year, for example. Another thing to consider as well is is actually if, if one mare doesn't take, will they let you transfer that stud fee to another mare that you might have or might be able to loan for the purpose of breeding? Um, so there's a couple of things that you should ask before signing up. Is there any restriction on how many times you can order semen? Some salians get busy and that will restrict how many times you can order semen because they can't, if their book size is say 30, 40, 50 mares, if, if every mare doesn't get in full and you have to repeat the collections, that will put more pressure on the horse. And especially some older stallions might start struggling with that. So some people might restrict to how many doses you get sent um, for your stud fee. Does the stud require the semen morning by specific order by a specific time in the morning? Usually the answer to that is yes. Um, when we stand a stallion up at the Willersley stud, you know, ideally we're, we're relatively flexible, but we would like to know by 10, 11 a.m. in the morning um, so that we can plan our day and make sure that that semen is ready to, to get in the post by 4.30 p.m. that afternoon. Um, you know, we're in the breeding season, everybody's busy um, and we're, we always want to accommodate everybody. But obviously there's a, a degree of logistical planning um, to get that semen processed and shipped. Um, most studs will have a cut-off time of 9 a.m. And you have to remember that if you're ordering from Europe, they are one hour ahead, which means it's 8 a.m. in the UK time. So definitely need to check what time it needs to be ordered by and let your vet know. There are times when a mare turns up to our clinic at 11 a.m. and we scan her and she's ready to go. And we will always call the stallion owner or agent to see if it's possible. And I'll, I'll tell you what, nine times out of ten, at that time of day or later, it will be a no. If ordering from abroad, will the semen be sent with the appropriate health papers? This should be a 100% yes. They need to be sent with health papers, as we've already discussed. This is another reason why European studs require you to order so early when they're shipping back to the UK. Because again, they need to arrange for a ministry vet to go in that day to, to clear that semen, sign the paperwork, and make sure it is suitable for shipping and passes all the, the health and standards that are required. So you need, to, you need to make sure that they have got health papers. So moving on from ordering and paying for your stud fees and sorting out your stallion contracts, um, the next thing is ensuring your semen. So it is worth knowing that stallion owners do not provide any insurance for the safe or non-delivery of equine semen. So um, I think that's where say safety there on non-delivery of the equine semen. So if, for example, in the semen gets stuck in Germany, which happened a couple of times with a mare last year, um, and it didn't didn't get to me in time, um, that process, you know, that, that lady would have paid for collection and shipping and would still not have received the semen. People won't won't provide insurance for that. And, and you will be have to forfeit the money um, to pay for that side of it. If the semen order is arranged via an agent, they will not provide insurance either for the transport or safe delivery. So same thing. So this is the same process, but if, for the agents instead of the owners. So basically nobody will, will pay for it. And the other thing to consider is the vet's fees. So vets, when they're lining up a mare for insemination, have to do numerous things. They swab the mare, mare, they do lots of scans, they would have used some drugs to make her ovulate and bring her into season potentially at the beginning. And it's the final hurdle is the semen arriving. If the semen arrive, doesn't arrive, that is also not the vet's fault. Um, so often there will be a, a new fee to start again if you miss the mare for ovulation because the semen doesn't arrive. So again, you are liable to those costs. If you have frozen equine semen in storage in the UK, it is your responsibility to ensure it. So we have a, a big store in the of semen at the Willersley Stud um, in the liquid nitrogen tanks. And it is up to individual people who own that semen to ensure it for the value that it is. We are not able to do that. We are not able to... It's very hard to put a cost on that. Um, and sometimes people that are only liable to receive the money that it costs for the collection and processing fees of the semen and not the actual stud fee. 
So just make sure you look into it and get that sorted, um, especially if it is valuable semen. So what can you do? Well, sadly, with chilled semen deliveries, there is not a great deal you can do. And it's one of the risks taken with this choice of AI. Um, if your chilled semen delivery does not arrive or is delayed, it may be possible to make a compensation claim on the courier company. And it is worth checking this with the stud agent. So if your semen doesn't arrive, the first thing to do is contact the stud with the stallion standing or the agent who you've ordered the semen through. They need to track where it ha where it is, where it in the country is. Sometimes it's actually stuck at a UK depot, which means if it's a local one, you or somebody could actually drive and pick it up and it's problem solved. So it's definitely worth chasing that up. Um, if it's not in the UK and it's outside of the country, and especially this year, there's no, no way we're going to be able to go and personally collect that, um, then sometimes you can make a claim against a courier company. So they might pay for the collection fee and the delivery fee and also sometimes for the vet's fees as well. So it's worth looking into that and consulting the stud or the agent about that. With frozen semen sold in the UK, it is possible to obtain insurance for its safekeeping through some equine insurance companies. So the British Equine Veterinary Association, or BEVA, um, do have a form um, on this and have some information on this online. So have a look at that um, and we can also try and guide you. Um, but again, it, it is your responsibility. So that semen product, it is your responsibility. We will obviously, when it's in storage with us, we look after the frozen tanks and keep up with nitrogen and, and keep it, manage the semen, you know, perfectly, adequately and nothing should happen to it. But if, for example, there was a fire or a theft um, even though it's locked away, then that is not, we are not able to compensate if that happens. Brilliant. So you did get the semen, you did choose the stallion, um, a fertile stallion. Um, you managed to get the semen with export papers and the mare would look good and she was inseminated. Woohoo! So your mare is in full. So what about breeding work after she's been confirmed in full? So the first thing you need is a covering certificate. So all stallions are registered with a particular stud book or breed society. For all mares confirmed in foal at the 1st of October, the stallion owner or agent are obliged to provide a covering certificate to the mare owner. So you need to tell them your mares in foal. It's pretty important, otherwise you won't get one. If they don't know your mares in foal, they're not going to provide you automatically with a certificate. So you do need written evidence that your mare is in foal before you'll be issued with one. Uh, the covering certificate is generally from the stub book the stallion is registered with and you can then use this to register your foal for a passport. So you need that covering certificate to prove the identification of that foal so that you can get a passport. So that is important and the stallion owner or the agent is the one responsible for providing you with that. But you need to inform them that your mare is in foal. So there will be part of the certificate that you will need to complete with your details and the chosen name of your foal then your vet will need to draw the markings of your foal and this needs to be transferred onto the certificate together with a note of the microchip paper. So often we um, draw the markings and microchip the foal when they're 10 to 14 days old. Um, this means that they're young enough to be handled and easy to do. When they get bigger, it's a lot tougher to restrain them. Um, it's a very quick procedure um, and, and generally they don't really mind. It's more the, the handling just to keep them still enough to put it in that they resent. Um, but it is quick and, and it's harmless and it's done and they get over it. So um, I recommend you get, get it done in the first sort of 10 to 14 days of the foal's life. You then send the paperwork to the sub book of Breed Society that you want your passport to be registered with and together with the relevant payment. Um, some Breed Societies require DNA sample from your mare and foal. This is often pluck tail hairs or, or mane hairs and you, when you do that you need to have plenty of the root on there. You actually need the skin cells rather than the hair. So the little root follicles um, with the skin casing is, is what they're looking for. And you need about 20 of those with a good covering on. Some breed societies, um, including Weatherbees, which are the thoroughbred racehorse um, stud book, require a blood sample instead. 
um, some require both. So again, you just need to check with your breed society um, before you, you get this. And, and sometimes as well, you need hair or blood from the, the mare as well. So just check what you need and then the vet can do it for you. Quite often the vet might have to sign the bag to prove that that sample was taken from the foal and often it has to be done before the foal is weaned. So another good reason to get it done early. Sometimes you can collect, get the microchip in, draw the markings and collect the DNA and then sit and wait until you've decided to run a name for the foal um, and got your covering certificate before posting it off to the breed societies. There are several, there's hundreds of horse passport providers, but a few suggestions that we use regularly are the Anglo-European Stud Book, the British Warm Blood Society, Sports Horse GB, Breeders Elite, Coloured Horse and Pony Society, Horse Passport Agency and KWPN. So it depends what you want, what you're looking to pay. Um, there's a huge variation um, in passporting your horse in intensity of um, work and cost. So have a look and make a decision. To some people, it doesn't matter and others it means a lot. Yeah, it depends what the purpose of, of your foal is going to be. And that's it. Thank you for listening. Um, as I said, Carol Potts is the, the expert in this side of things, um, but all of us are very happy to help and deal with a lot of queries. If we don't know, we will find out for you. Um, but do your homework. Choose a salient that is going to suit your budget and your needs, suitable for your mare. And, um, and good luck, and hopefully we'll see some of your mares soon. Thank you.